साइंस ओलंपियाड क्लास सेवन रिप्रोडक्शन इन प्लांट्स मल्टीप्लिकेशन इन प्लांट्स इंट्रोडक्शन मल्टीप्लिकेशन और रिप्रोडक्शन मे बी डिफाइंड एज द एबिलिटी ऑफ लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम्स टू प्रोड्यूस न्यू लिविंग बींग्स सिमिलर टू देम सेल्व्स देर आर अ नंबर ऑफ मेथड्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन बट ईच ऑफ देम कैन बी क्लासिफाइड either as a sexual mode or as a sexual mode of reproduction reproduction in plants asexual reproduction asexual reproduction is the formation of new individuals from the cells of a single parent it does not involve the fusion of male and female sex cells and the new individuals are completely identical to the parent it is the simplest form of reproduction sexual reproduction sexual reproduction involves two parents and the fusion of male and female reproductive cells or sex cells called gametes the male gamete fuses with the female gamete to form a single cell called the zygote which develops into a new individual this new individual is similar but not identical to either of the parents asexual reproduction common forms of asexual reproduction in plants are budding fragmentation and spore formation budding microscopic organisms such as yeasts reproduce asexually by budding as shown in this process a small bulb like cellular outgrowth is formed from the cell called a bud this bud keeps on increasing in size and forms an independent organism which separates from the parent fragmentation fragmentation is a very common form of asexual reproduction in the plant kingdom in algae the adult organism just breaks up into two or more pieces called fragments each of these fragments grows up to become a new individual this process is seen in spirogyra pond silk fucus etc spore formation some lower plants such as ferns mosses and lichens multiply asexually through spores as shown spores are microscopic single celled or several celled reproductive bodies that are mostly spherical in shape and are protected by a thick wall when conditions are unfavorable like humidity and temperature once they land on favorable conditions these spores burst out of the thick wall start multiplying and grow into new individuals vegetative reproduction natural methods roots tuberous roots of dahlia sweet potato and asparagus can be set aside for multiplication in the next season these roots have food stored in them stems stems are the most common part of a vegetative propagation vegetative propagation through stems is of the following types creeping stem runner plants such as oxalis and grass grow horizontal stems parallel to the ground almost touching it as shown thus new roots sprout from the nodes new shoots also grow upwards forming new plants at frequent intervals creeping stem sucker in plants such as mint and chrysanthemum horizontal stems arise from the base of the erect shoot growing horizontally in the soil and then comes out to form new aerial shoots as shown these shoots become independent plants when suckers break away from the parent plants stolon Stolons are arched runners which cross over small obstacles and develop small plantlets at their nodes example valicinaria and wild strawberry offset an offset is similar to a runner but the trailing stem is much shorter with plantlets forming right at the base example water lettuce underground stem rhizomes these are underground stems 
that have buds from which outgrowths are produced which give rise to new plants as shown. This is seen in ginger, turmeric and banana. Bulbs Bulbs can be considered to be very short underground stems encased in thickened fleshy bulb scales which are modified leaves. The scales serve as sites of food accumulation as shown. In the spring, when the stem shoots up from the center of the scale cluster to form a new plant, it will draw its food from the scales. Underground stem Tubers Tubers are underground stems that swell up due to food stored in them. They have buds in the eyes which give rise to new plants, example potato. These new plants use up the food stored in the underground stem to grow. Corms A corm is an underground stem which has food stored in it. Corms are lots of rhizomes joined together which develop into daughter plants, for example, gladulus and colocasia. Leaves Leaves of number of plants such as bryophyllum develop small buds called adventitious buds on their margin. These buds grow into new plants when the leaf falls off from the parent plant. Artificial Methods Cutting This method is generally used for sugarcane, rose, bougainvillea, crotons and hibiscus. It involves cutting off part of a stem, leaf or root and placing it in moist soil. After some time, these stems strike roots at the base and grow into a new plant. Grafting This is a very common method used in ornamental and fruit plants to develop new varieties called hybrid varieties. Tissue culture Some plants such as chrysanthemum, orchids and asparagus are being grown by this method. A small piece of tissue called the explant, is cut off from the growing tips of plants. These cells are kept in a medium rich in nutrients that promotes cell division. Cell division results in a mass of loosely arranged cells called callus, which eventually forms multiple shoots. Rooted shoots are shifted to individual pots and suitable conditions provided for them to grow into mature plants. The importance of tissue culture lies in the following. A small piece of tissue can give you several thousand plants. Taking an X plant does not harm the mother plant, so endangered plants can be multiplied safely. Agents of pollination The most common agents of pollination are wind, water, insects, mammals and birds. Wind Wind blows away pollen grains from the anthers of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Such flowers are small, not brightly colored, do not produce nectar, have very light pollen grains so that they can easily be blown away with the wind, anthers are large and loosely attached, stigma hang out of the flowers to trap the pollen grains. Agents of Pollination Water Pollination in aquatic plants is usually carried out by water. An example is seagrass. Water pollinated flowers release their pollen grains into the water and are passively carried to other flowers by water currents as shown. Insects Many insects visit flowers for nectar. During the process, some pollen sticks to the body parts of these insects. Then, when the insect visits another flower, the pollen grains are brushed off, some of which fall on the stigma. Insect pollinated flowers usually have a sweet smell and bright colors, nectarines that produce nectar, and sticky stigma and pollen grains. Examples are buttercup, sweet pea, orchids, etc. Mammals Some flowers are pollinated by small mammals such as bats and rodents. 
Mammal pollinated flowers have the following characteristics. They often have a strong scent. Example, those that attract mice have a yeasty odor. They are often brown or white in color. They are quite sturdy in order to bear the vigorous activity of small animals while they feed on the nectar these flowers provide. Birds Bird pollinated flowers are much more common than mammal pollinated flowers. Two large group of birds which pollinate flowers are the sunbirds of Africa and Asia and the hummingbirds of the Americas. Both groups of birds have long beaks that allow them to reach inside the petal tubes of flowers. Hummingbirds are well known for their ability to hover in front of the flowers while drinking the nectar. Sunbirds, however, sit on the flower stalk and collect the nectar. Bird pollinated flowers have the following characteristics. They often have red, orange or yellow petals or sepals or stamens that are attractive to birds. They are not usually scented because most birds do not have a well-developed sense of smell. Fertilization After successful pollination, the stigma secretes nutrients if pollen has landed on the correct stigma of the correct plant. The pollen grains absorb these nutrients and start growing. Then, pollen tube keeps growing till it reaches the ovule inside the ovary and enters it. The male cell is carried inside the pollen tube. Once the pollen tube reaches the ovule, the male cell is released and it fuses with the female gamete, eggs present there. Fertilization takes place and a zygote is formed. Fruit formation After fertilization, the ovary enlarges to form the fruit as shown. The ovarian wall becomes the fruit wall. It is called the pericarp. The ovules become the seeds. A fruit may have one or more seeds. The petals, sepals and the other parts of the flower wither away and fall off. The fruit is the seed-bearing structure of a flowering plant. Technically, it is the ripened ovary of the plant. Seed formation. Once the zygote is formed, rapid cell division takes place and an embryo is formed. This embryo is enclosed within a tough protective coat. Seeds with a plumule, from which the shoot comes out, a radical, from which the root emerges, and cotyledons, where food is stored, are formed. Fruit and seed dispersal. Fruits are adapted in different ways to aid dispersal. In the simplest mechanism, the seeds are automatically set free by opening of the fruit. An explosive mechanism bursts the fruit open to release the seeds. Such fruits are called dehiscent fruits, for example, the pea family. But very often, both fruits and seeds together form the dispersal unit. These are the non-dehiscent fruits. Dispersal takes place by several mechanisms including wind, water and a variety of animals. Dispersal by birds Most fleshy and brightly coloured fruits are designed to be eaten by birds and mammals. The taste and nutrition are the attraction for the animal to come back again and again. The seed may pass out in the faeces or may be thrown away. Some birds eat fruits whose seeds stick to their beaks and then are rubbed off somewhere else. Seeds of other fruits pass intact through a bird's digestive tract. Flower is the reproductive part of the plant. The stalk of the flower is called pedicle. The floral parts are present on the swollen part of the pedicle called thalamus which are arranged in whorls. Four whorls present in a flower are calyx, corolla, androsium and gynosium. Calyx consists of sepals and corolla consists of petals. Androsium is the male part and consists of ovary, style and stigma.
Gynoecium is the female part and consists of ovary, style and stigma. The ovary consists of ovules attached to placenta. Pollen grains are developed in the anthers of stamens. The study of pollen grains is called palynology. The tissue enclosed inside the ovule is called nucleus, which is covered by two coverings called integuments. The integuments leave a small pore known as microphile. The basal part of the ovule is called chalaza. The helper cells or synergids are present on either side of the egg cell. The three cells present towards chalaza are called antipodals. Types of vegetative propagation with examples are given in the table. Modes of dispersal of seeds with examples are given in the table.